Good evening, and welcome to my laboratory. What you're looking at there is uh, what I'm calling the Laser Saber Ghost Light Circuit, uh, but I've made a couple of changes. I already talked about uh, putting the resistor uh, so that it could be uh, switched across the diode, bypassing the diode to enable the thing to function as a proper joule thief at low voltages. That's on the schematic diagram that I posted uh, in a previous video. What's not on that schematic is uh, this little addition over here. There's a 220K resistor there that I can switch across the, uh, the collector and base of this transistor to get it to start oscillating. and that's switched with a switch there and you can see I've got it labeled Jewel Thief or Ghost Light and then I'll be hooking up the earth ground to the unused terminal of that switch okay so in a in a previous video I showed this thing with a different transformer uh, powering um, another bank of big LEDs. I'm not going to power a big bank of LEDs this time. I just want to show um, the low voltage behavior on inputs of very low voltage. And then I'm going to use the um, Elenco to give to charge the capacitor to 12 volts and we'll look at the behavior of the single LED uh, output ghost light uh, at 12 volts. Right now I've got it hooked up to my uh, little uh, dead battery board there. I explained uh, previously that I can use this switch to either switch it off or to switch just one battery or both batteries in series. Uh, the voltmeter here, right now I've got it on the 200 millivolt setting. It's looking at the voltage on the capacitor bank. This is about 11,000 microfarads uh, of little capacitors that I took out of old TV sets. Most of them are uh, 1,000 microfarad 16 volt caps. A couple of them are a little bit bigger than that, higher voltage, but the, it adds up to about 11,000 11, microfarads. Um, so we're looking at the residual voltage on there right now, 840 millivolts, and uh, it's not unusual for capacitors like that to spontaneously recharge. So here I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this little jumper and I'm just going to short out uh, the batteries off, right? but it's connected to the capacitor bank. So if I short these terminals here, I'll be shorting, shorting the bank, if I can manage to do this without blocking the light. Okay, there. I've shorted the bank. And I'm leaving it shorted for a while. Now when I take the shorting strap off, it's going to stay good. You see, it'll climb back up a little bit. So, um, at, uh, and if you start with a much more charged electric capacitor, it'll do this at an even greater rate. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about there. I've got this circuit disabled right now so if I put a two if I just switch this to the two volt two battery setting we exceed the 200 millivolts so there we're looking at a charge of, of 2.03 volts on that battery bank and it's it did start the jewel thief even though I had it off uh, but any, at any rate so that's two volts we'll turn it off now and the jewel thief discharges and then stops oscillating at about one volt. Okay, now the thing's just leaking. So now I can go back to my 200 millivolt setting. And you can see that the, the capacitor's leaking and there's some current in the Joule Thief that's drawing down the voltage on the capacitors. Now if I short the capacitor bank at this point, discharging its voltage and then unshort it, see how it climbs back up? And if I had started at 12 volts, this, this effect would be even greater. It would just spontaneously bounce back from being briefly completely discharged. 
That's why to really discharge an electrolytic capacitor, you have to hold it shorted for quite some time. But that's not really the effect that I wanted to demonstrate. Uh, I just wanted to demonstrate that uh, to demonstrate it. Okay, so here I've got uh, diode and resistor. So let's switch. Let's to get the thing to run reliably as a low voltage joule thief. I had to put the resistor across the diode. So that's what the switch in this position does. And then to get it to start oscillating reliably, I had to put that. 220k resistor between collector and base there. Okay, so that's what this upper position is, Joule Thief JT here. So, like that, now we've got a good low voltage Joule Thief. If I go to the one battery, okay, that's uh, 1.14 volts on the battery, and I guess you can see the LET is glowing nicely there, okay. And then if I go to the two battery position, uh, can't do this for very long, two battery position, that green LED at 1.57 volts starts turning a little orange, which means that it's, anybody who's worked with green LEDs knows that when they turn orange they're about to pop. So I don't want to stress that one. I've already blown out all of my white LEDs and a couple of 2N2222 transistors, <laughs> but I finally think I understand what's going on with this circuit. Alright, so right now we're operating at a low voltage Joule Thief mode, uh, 1.12 volts on the capacitor, and the LEDs glow in nicely, okay, and it's operating independently, nothing's going on, alright, so now what I want to do is uh, turn off the battery, and you can see that the it takes a, takes a moment, I'm sorry about the light, it takes a moment for the LED to to dim, it's already dimmed, and um, that's perfectly ordinary normal behavior. You touch the circuit anywhere you want to, and nothing bad happens, nothing good happens either. All right, okay, so now let's go to the ghost light mode. So I take the this is the clip to the outside, uh, outside ground, earth ground, and clip that to there move this switch to the ghost light position which puts takes the resistor out and puts the clip uh, the ground clip right to the base of the 2N2222 transistor and then here we'll switch to the D to the diode mode so now we've got uh, the circuit as presented by laser saber uh, in the version 2 right this my additions have been removed okay so now we've got some residual charge on the on the capacitor and there's nothing happens when we touch anything All right. so let's pump the capacitor up to to the two battery voltage there 2.15 volts the light didn't come on. It's not doing a jewel thief thing. So now I'll turn the battery off. I still have voltage on the capacitor. In fact, I'll unplug the battery completely. You can't have this circuit plugged into an external power supply. Uh, you have to use batteries, otherwise you will really fool yourself about what's going on. Alright, so we still have voltage on the capacitor. And now, there's the ghost light. I'm touching here. Off. Uh, ghost light on. Ghost light off. And uh, I'm going to turn off the overhead light. Okay. When I'm not touching, the voltage is stable. Right? It's not, not discharging. It's staying on the capacitor. Right? When I come over here and touch, going, there's the ghost light and there's power coming off the capacitor and it's coming off slowly okay now remember we just started with one and a half volts here right and uh, it's starting to blink a little and flicker a little okay voltage on the cap is going down Okay, so I think you can see what's going on here. So I'm going to let go here, and now what I'm going to do 
is give that cap a 12 volt charge with the trusty Elenco power supply just by going like this look you see how the light came on there as soon as I hooked up the negative lead only of the power supply that's why you got to be careful with this circuit okay now here point and there the lights on take the negative lead off that was see there the light is on with just the negative lead of the power supply right because I boinked it and gave that capacitor a 12 volt charge now when I disconnect the negative lead the light goes out so you think that's good right okay so I'm gonna put the camera in the tripod right now or try to tripods very often. Okay, so we've still got a little bit over 10 volts on the capacitor. Right. And we're in the ghost light mode. And I'm going to turn out the overhead light. I'm going to touch. I guess I can't turn out the overhead light, sorry. Uh, but okay, so I'm touching now, not touching, touching. You can see the see the ghost light right there, right? And you you can see the voltage on the capacitor going down. And when I untouch, the voltage on the capacitor stops draining, and the light goes out. And when I touch, I get the light. Voltage starts going down again. So what's happening here? I finally figured out is that. My body is acting as a capacitive pickup for the EM fields from the line wiring in the house. And that line wiring EM field is fluctuating plus and minus around a ground point, the earth ground point. If I scope it, I get a good signal of about 150 volts, 170 volts average, but fluctuating plus and minus 57 volts or so RMS around the ground point. So, and, and there is actually enough energy in there to just barely make an LED flicker if I take the earth ground and touch it to the ground position of the, of the uh, house wiring. Okay. So what's happening now is that the LED is obviously running on the stored charge of the battery because when I let my finger go the battery stops running down but what's happening is my body is acting like a capacitive switch and we're switching we're using the 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 oscillating 60 Hertz oscillating line frequency to just barely switch that 2N2222 transistor enough to make the Joule, Joule Thief circuit work at a low and constant voltage. The light stays at about the same, you probably may have noticed that the light was almost as bright at the full 12 volts charge as it was with only the 2 volts charge. That's because there's some kind of uh, internal natural voltage regulation on the thing happening too. Um, the Joule Thief effect is is regulated somehow by this circuit. So even with 12 volts on the capacitor you just get a nice little dim ghost light. Okay. It's can you still can you see it? It's still going. It's still going good. Off, on, off, on. See there? And now we're we're down we it was already down to about 10 volts when I first started. Okay. And so now it's going down to 1.7 or 1.8 or so. What was it? I can't hardly see that. 1.65, 1 1.6. But the light's still glowing, and we know that the Jewel Thief will keep the light lit down to a voltage of about 0.8 or so. I hope it will, or 0.7. But I want to stop here at this voltage and turn the meter back to the millivolt range. Okay. And look what's happening. We're not connected to any power supply, and I don't even have my finger on the thing now. When I put my finger on, the voltage drops. When I take my finger off, 
the voltage climbs, right? So one of two things is happening here. Either, either we really are transducing voltage from the house wiring through the earth ground, which I don't think is happening, or we're just seeing the natural uh, recovery effect, rebound effect of an electrolytic capacitor. Okay. The way to test that would be to see if the rebound effect continues uh, or if it gets less and less with every discharge. I think if the rate of rebound was the same well, I don't know, maybe that's not right, because you'd be starting at the same starting voltage, so maybe you can't tell by the change in rate of the rebound. Okay, I can just barely see that the ghost light is on now, so that's about where we'll stop. Uh, but once again, as soon as I took my finger off, you can see that the voltage on those capacitors starts climbing again. And it looks to me like it's climbing a little bit more slowly this time, so... So maybe you can use that uh, rate of rebound as a test, because if it was picking up voltage from the mains, there's no reason why it should slow down with multiple drains and retests, right? See what I'm saying? Now it's coming back more slowly than it was the last time I did this. Or is it? Alright, that's a long one. Thank you for watching.